they'll be doing this training today. So I'm going to turn it over to them. Y'all go ahead. What's up, everybody? I don't know what's going on, everyone. All right, all right, all right. I'm here. You got producer Jay Joseph in the building as well. Awesome. Right. Jess, yeah, say what's up to the people. Oh, I did. Hey, everybody. Can y'all hear me? Yes. All right, perfect. Let me, let me get my audio together. Terry, Laura, Brenda. Hey, Talene, good to see you all on the training today. Absolutely. So today we are uh, talking about digital marketing. Um, we're going to, well, this whole series is about digital marketing. And we want to get, you know, by the time we're done with this series, we want everybody to understand that it's not just social media. We hear a lot about, oh, social media. We're going to teach you social media. You're going to learn social media. Or you need to apply social media. Um, it's not just about video marketing. You'll hear a lot about that. Oh, video marketing. We need video you're going to hear that. Um, it, it's, it's digital, right? It's how you market, how you position yourself in this digital space to ultimately attract business. That's all it is. Like, we're going to keep it simple. We're not going to overcomplicate this thing. It's what are the things that you're doing? What's the messaging that you're going to use? How are you going to go about attracting business to you so for your real estate career you can grow your real estate career so you know as we go through these sessions like I, I just I want you guys to just you know equate it to when you know you was a, a little kid you know in pre-k think about how curious you were when you was in a pre-k three four you know five years old you know, when you're, in, you're, when you're at that age, like, you know, everything is interesting. Everything interests you. You're, you know, it's this wonder that you experience uh, when you're that age. And, you know, it's easy for you to learn. It's easy for you to grasp information. And at that age, it's easy for you to, to do the things that, you know, people tell you to do like at that age you tell a, you tell a kid a, a young kid something they immediately go do it you know if they get a thought they get an idea they immediately go and apply what they learn so that's what this is all about so sit back um put on your seat belt um let's get this going jess we're gonna go ahead and give you sharing capabilities so you can pull the presentation up okay um, Going to be presenting we're just going to be kind of tag teaming this thing and uh there will definitely be opportunity for questions and comments uh Lashavia is going to be monitoring the chat so we'll be seeing what comes up from that perspective as well uh but you all are going to learn a lot uh, today a lot that you'll be able to apply so uh with that being said Jess let's get this show on the road all right let's go ahead and give me sharing capabilities I'll get it pulled up are you able to share Jess no I'm not Can you hear me, Mike? Yes, we can hear you now. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, I don't have sharing capabilities. I can hear you. Perfect. Thank you all. All right, hold on. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Jeff. You all see the presentation? Yes. All right, perfect. Yes. Perfect, perfect. All right, so we're going to get into this training on how to do the here, how to use um, flyers in your digital marketing strategy. 
right. So of course, um, as Mr. Davis has stated, video <laughs> is what you hear a lot about. We got to do video. It's what captures people. But flyers are still effective in this day and time. <laughs> your messaging out and if I can move on here just how effective are flyers for your marketing all right this is some st statistics here as many as 78 percent of consumers glance at the message messages included in the flyer that are posted um, on their doors or where, really wherever and a total of 23 percent read them thoroughly not only are flyers effective at engaging your customers but they're also proven to drive trigger further interaction with a brand. And that's the main thing that you want to do. You want to, like Mr. Davis was saying, you, you want to pique people's curiosity. You know, mm, what's that? And you want to get them to interact with what it is, whatever is on that flyer, you want it to trigger something um, in them. Like, oh, I have that problem. Oh, this relates to me. Something that's going to capture their attention um, to make them want to interact with what it is that you are offering, what it is that you do, okay? The first step, go ahead. I said, go back to that slide. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, the, the big takeaway is that over 50, like, you know, over three, three quarters of people, consumers, that they, the messages that they see on flyers or billboards or, you know, posts, they are reading it, right? Don't feel like when you're putting this stuff out there, even if they're not responding to you, you know, this, this is statistics, right? These are numbers. People have researched. They've done the research on this stuff. And those messages are unconscious. They're subliminal. You know, I, I take a, I go back to this time. It was during the World Series last year and Jimmy John's kept playing this commercial and you know commercials were they 30 seconds they're not long but they kept playing this commercial and and I knew what it was doing to me I'd never been to Jimmy John's I never had a desire to uh eat a Philly cheesesteak but I kept seeing this commercial they kept playing the commercial 30 second commercial headline even when I wasn't paying attention to the thing, I was doing something else, it's playing in the background. And I just had this strong desire to go find me a Jimmy, a Jimmy John's so I could go find that sandwich. And I mean, I'm, I really, I literally went recon seven to try to identify where this a Jimmy John's was to go get that sandwich. So even if consciously people aren't uh, um, accepting from a conscious level, subconsciously, the messaging that you put in your marketing, it is having an impact. Uh, and that's gonna go along with some of the other things that we're gonna talk about in the presentation when it comes to creativity and thinking through, because the reality is, is that it is speaking to people on a subconscious level. So I really wanted to kind of hone that point in just before we went on to the next thing. Absolutely. But, all right, first step, I hope you all are taking notes and we can definitely get, maybe get a slide sent out to you, these slides sent to you, but it's set a goal, okay? That's the first step that you want to do, thinking about marketing with flyers, okay? And some of the questions that you want to ask yourself um, when setting this goal is, what do you want, okay? What is it that you're wanting to gain? Is it more followers? Is it more clients, more leads? You want people to attend your open house? Um, are you wanting people to know more about, more clients wanting them to know more about the services that you offer? What do you want to gain? Okay. Mike, do you have anything else you want to say on what that first step? No, no, absolutely. I appreciate you bringing, bringing me in on that, Jess. Because when, what I don't want you all to fall into the trap of just following what other real estate professionals are doing, right? Or just even other sales professionals, whether that's uh, lenders, whether that's CPAs, whether that's, you know, our finance people. Don't get caught up on just looking at what they're doing and duplicating, right? You literally need to sit down and consider 
as it relates to your business, what you provide, what service. Because the reality is, is that there are people that are really good at what they do, right? They may, they may be really good at being at mortgages, doing loans, applications. They're really good at that. They may be really good at being a realtor, right? You know, helping someone buy a house, helping someone sell a house. Like they're really good at the transactional side of things, but they're not good at marketing, right? Marketing is something separate from your craft. Right. Like, again, you may be a baker. You may be really good at baking cakes. But that don't mean you good at attracting people to your product. So one of the things that I find in real estate, you know, being in it over 18 years, is that a lot of realtors just duplicate what other realtors are doing without going through this process that we're talking about as it relates to creating thinking uh considering these metrics that you want to do so these questions are important uh, and that very first one what do i want to gain from people seeing this flyer what do i want them to do is key because that's going to go big into your messaging so i, I just wanted to say that about that just absolutely and um just to piggyback off what you said as far as not always duplicate but it's, um doing is because simply you may not have the same um, purpose. You know, you may not be wanting to gain the same things. You may not have the same message. You may, it may not represent who you are truly and what it is that you can really um, want to be passionate about when it comes to at executing what it is that you're putting out there. Um, you're just copying. And so you want to make sure that things align when it comes to um, what you're putting out there. So what do you want to gain? The next one is what do I want to tell people? And that's that's your messaging. You know, what ultimately what, what am I saying? And a lot of that comes not only with when you think about messaging, it's okay, of course, what it is that you're offering for your business, you know, some of your value, the values of your business, the mission of it, all uh, um but what do I want to it also conveys your personality, your character, all of that stuff can be put into your messaging as well. You know, the type of uh I would say the vibe, you know, is it a warm feeling messaging? Is it funny? Is it quirky? Is it um, just super professional? All of those things are uh, important when you're thinking about what do you want to tell people? Okay, and we'll go a little further into that. And the next question is, who is going to see this? Okay, who's going to see it? What's your market? You know, who are you targeting? You know, is it, or, I mean, as a broker, are you targeting realtors? You know, um, are you looking for more clients? Are we talking, you know, who is it that this is going to see this? Where are they going to see it? Well, those are some questions that you want to ask yourself when you are creating your flyer. Mike, do you have anything? I'm going to bring you in. Yeah, so, yeah, so the, you know, what we're really telling everyone, Jess, is before you do a flyer, because some people are just thinking, oh, it's a flyer, it's easy. I'll just jump on here real quick and throw something together. And what we're saying is, is that you cannot approach it that way. Like you're going to have to do some research, right? You're going to have to think through some things before you begin that creating process. So these questions, you know, not to overcomplicate things, because, you know, we broke it down into three questions, right? But it could be a bunch of questions that you might want to get the answer to prior to creating this flight, just depending on who you are. Like, you know, my background is in engineering, so I might go out there and find 50 questions because I'm crazy like that, but don't be mm -hmm. like me, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but the point is, is that you're going to you're gonna need to do some research if you're going to have the impact that you deserve to have by putting in this work. It's, you know, our time is limited. So if you're going to devote some time to something, if you're going to devote some energy, you're going to devote some effort to it, then you want to be able to get a good return on that investment. So you got to do some research and you got to think through some things prior to beginning. So that's what we're saying here. Uh, and what Jess is talking about here when it comes to these questions, Jess. Absolutely. Um, something I was going to say as far as who is going to see this, um, just a, another little point is, when you're thinking about who is going to see it, you can start to relate to, okay, well, what is, what are some of their problems? What, 
what gets a realtor's attention, you know, or what a realtor's like, or what's one of the things that realtors struggle with, um, or what is it something that clients have these myths about when it comes to purchasing a home, or you just want to kind of get into their head. So who is it that, um, who is going to see this? All right. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat for sure, and we'll definitely address those. We're just going to move along here to the second step. This one is really um, big, especially from a design um, standpoint. With me being heavily involved in designing, I'm sure they can relate. Create a schedule. Create a schedule. When it comes to your flyers, you want to make sure that you set aside some time to allow your creativity to flow. It's nothing like having to, you want to put out a message, but then not having the time. You can't really think about those first questions that we, we talked about that are important. Being able to identify, you know, who am I targeting? What is my message? What do I want to convey? So set aside that time not only for the messaging and to brainstorm, but then also, okay, well, what's gonna attract people? Are there, are, doing a research, are there certain colors that stand out to people? Um, what field do I want this flyer to, to showcase? You know, so allow your mind to just flow, set that time where you're not rushed. You don't have to get this out maybe the ne in the next five minutes or next day, that you can actually think through the process of what you want visual Fire to this visual to look like. Hey Jess, and I know they're screaming. Jess, I know they're, they're screaming in their brains mm -hmm. like, I don't have time to do that. I got mm -hmm. stuff I gotta do. I mean, I gotta do my coaching sessions with Mike and his he keeps telling me I need to call <laughs> people and call these people. Then I got my clients calling, then I got life happening. Like I ain't got time to sit here and mm -hmm. think about and let my creativity flow. So, uh, you know, before I respond to Jess, how would you respond to somebody saying that to you? Because I know they're thinking it. They're like, yeah. like, I'm a super busy realtor. I don't have time to do this. How do right. you, well, you You just said it, you know, I don't have time. So well, with, with us, I mean, we, if we want to accomplish something, we have to make the time, right? But it's, So it's making the time, setting the side, side the time. So you already know that you, you are limited. Well, you, get, you have to carve out, you just got to carve out some space, whether it's, you know, 10 minutes, let me just be intentional about thinking about this message, just being intentional, whether you're driving, maybe you're driving home or something. It's just constantly, okay, well, what do I, how can I be creative? What can I add to this uh, message or to this fire or whatever it is that you're trying to convey? But you do have to set, a, it's no real way around it. You have to set aside a little bit of time to put some intentional thought um, behind it. And it doesn't have to take- Absolutely, absolutely. And what it sounds like you're saying, Jess, is, is that you got to get organized. Yeah. <laughs> you got to you gotta operate off of by a calendar. You just can't go haphazard, fly by the seat of your pants. Uh, you got to plan some things out. Like, you know, in the coaching, we talk about weekly, like planning your week, right? Sitting down for mm -hmm. you know, so and thinking about what's the next seven days going to look like right. down in a plan. We think about, you know, planning your day. You know, what's the next 24 hours going to look like? You know, I love the words you use, just intentional. Mm -hmm. Things that I want to be intentional about over the next seven days. What are the things that I want to be intentional about over the next 24 hours? What do I want to achieve? And if, okay, I need to create this flyer and I need this flyer to go out because I'm wanting to attract business or I'm having an event or you know, I want to maximize my reach, then that needs to be that thing that you need to be intentional about over that seven day period. And you need to put that on your calendar and you need mm -hmm. to time block it on this day. At this time, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to let my creativity flow, you know, so it requires a multitude of things coming together. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so no, uh, you know, I'm with you 100%. Hey, look, man, I, we got some good gems coming out here, man. Y'all better be taking some notes. Y'all better have y'all pen and y'all paper out. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right, plan ahead. So just plan ahead. Know what you have coming up. Set some time aside and let the creativity flow. All right. Next step, three, step three, determine your target audience. We touched on that a little bit in the first when we were thinking about our questions. You know, who is going to see this? Um, 
but really a lot of people can possibly see your see what it is your flyer and it just not resonate with them but you do have a target audience there are some people that you are specifically looking to to hit um and those others maybe they know somebody that that can benefit from what it is that you're putting out there but determine your target audience who do you want to find who do you want to find out more about what it is that you're doing or what it is that you offer with typo there but is it other agents real estate professionals anybody you know we said it could be anybody but we know that there's um some people that you're going to be targeting and potential buyers and sellers so those are some of the people especially within our field um are individuals that you may be targeting your flyers um, must appeal to every audience that you are wanting to attract. Okay, so be intentional about that in your planning when you're planning ahead as to how can I attract these individuals? Who is it? Like I said earlier, what, what appeals to them? Hey, Jess, what, one of the things that I'm going to want us to do, and I think it will really help resonate. We don't have to do it right now, but we're definitely going to do it before the training is over with. And I think it'll help everybody resonate with what we're talking about here is that we're going to go to the website and look at the box section and look at the seller section, because we literally had to do this process. Mm -hmm. We came up with the marketing when it came to those areas. So yeah, sure. I, uh, we're going to do that. And I think it really backs up with when you say you want Say, for instance, if you're putting together, you know, obviously, mostly, you know, it's realtors that, that's on the call with us today. So you're thinking about how can I attract more buyers or how can I attract more sellers? Well, you know, as we go through the questions that we talked about, like, you know, who's your audience? Okay, buyers is the audience. All right, well, what do they want? You know, what do buyers want? So, like, you just, if you go to buyers, you know, one of the questions that we had to ask ourselves is, is that, well, what do buyers really care about? Like, do they care? You know, first thing they care about really is looking at houses. Like, buyers want to look at houses. So when we created the web page for buyers, you know, one of the first things that we had to do, just if you scroll down, one of the first things we had to do was give them an opportunity where they could search for properties, right? So you got to put that piece in there. All right, all right. So now, after you know, being, you know, having the ability to look for properties, which is what buyers want to do. They like, buyers don't care about their credit. They don't care if they got the right credit. They don't care if they can afford it. They don't care if they can get the loan. They don't care. What they care about is this is the house I want, period. It's up to us as professionals to help them, help reel them in when it comes to all these other elements. But you can't attract a buyer by saying, get your credit or talk to the lender. Like none of that is enticing or, or, or attractive to a buyer. So you're not going to attract buyers putting that kind of messaging out there. Buyers don't want to be educated. That's another thing that as realtors, we try to do a lot of. We try to educate the consumer. The consumer ain't asking you for education. They asking you to buy a house, right? So, you know, we've come to those conclusions through research, right? One of the first elements that we're talking about before we even get into the creativity you got to identify what are the things that's going to resonate. So what we determined was um, buyers want to search. All right. And then scroll up some more, Jess. And, and buyers want their hand held. Right. See, at the end of the day, a buyer doesn't care about how much you know. There's a lot of, I say this all the time in my coaching, there's a lot of realtors out here that want to, they feel like, they need to know as much as they can that the buyer or the client wants them to know as much as they can. No, no, go back, Jess, go back to buyer. Okay. That the buyer wants them as a real estate professional to know as much as they can about the process. And that's not what buyers care about. They care about how much do you care about them? How, as a real estate professional, how are you going to serve? How are you going to care? It's not really about what you know. It's one of the biggest thing, biggest challenges that I have with realtors is getting them to understand that piece is that they don't care how much you know. We're here, we're 20 years. We got hundreds of years of experience at Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm. You can tap into the knowledge. The knowledge is easy to get. But what we can't do for you is care for the client. Like you care for the client. So even if you look at the where it says we are ready to serve, 
where it talks about hire us, a home buying consultant will contact you within one business day. That now that you are buying a home, if you would like Brooks and Davis to hold your hand throughout the home buying process, like to most, to some people, it's like, oh, that's real subtle. Like nobody can really see that. It was a lot of thought that went into us coming up with that messaging. We're going to hold your hand throughout the home buying process. It was a lot of thought that went through that. And it was a lot of thought that went through them having that ability to search for properties. All right. And then we'll come back. We'll come back and look at the seller piece. But I just wanted to give them just a, 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 um, a, 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 an idea of a practical use of some of these elements that we're talking about here. Good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that was great. All right, guys. So let's just move on to the next um, piece. Let me get back on the screen here. All right. Some of you all may be asking uh, when it comes to actually creating flyers, where are some resources that you can use? Um, one program that's or site that's become very popular um, lately has been Canva. Is that it's very user friendly and it does have images that you can pull and use from there. Um, some that are free and some that are stock images that are caught that cost, but um, you don't have to upgrade to the paying for subscription for, for Canva to get started. So I definitely would use Canva. Um, another one, the second one there is Poster My Walls, also user friendly and has images. Um, both of these. Uh, sites have templates that you can use. So I would definitely encourage for the um, you, especially those who don't have a design background or maybe feel like they're not as strong in that area to pull up some templates. So let's see some of the um, templates there that attract you, maybe even as a realtor, <clears throat> like, oh, this caught my eye. I want to kind of use it, but make it my own. Okay, we don't want to fall into just completely duplicating what it is that someone else has done because you want to make it unique to what it is that you offer, your personality and those things. Um, you all just came off of my screen, so I wanna make sure everyone's still here. Looks like, okay, I see. All right, perfect. So post on my wall, Google um, for images. So there may you may find that in Canva or post on my wall that there's just not an image that's, you know, giving you what it is that you want to convey in your, in your flyer. So you can go ahead and search Google. If you go to Google, put in the search, say I'm looking for uh, for sale signs of realtors or a closing or something like, you know, a person who just bought a home, you can put that in there and just find an image that maybe looks um, appealing to you. For those that just don't want to do any, go ahead, Mike. Well, I was going to say, what say, you also want to consider is, you're not you're not really you're not, appealing to yourself. Really you understand what I'm saying? And I know that's kind of where me and me and Jess we 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 um we cross paths sometimes because she's a true creator. Mm -hmm. Most creatives they create stuff for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they don't care if anybody else like it, right? Am I lying, Jess? No. Or tell the truth. It's true. So, so most creators, when they're creating something, they're doing it because it's something that they appreciate that they like. You obviously need to bring a creative person into the process, but what makes it challenging sometimes when it comes to marketing is that you're really creating and designing this for somebody else to like. Meaning you may run into that crossroads where you're looking at this and you're like, man, this is horrible. Like I will never be attracted to this. But based on the research, this is what people like. This is what people are, would be attracted to. One of the biggest things, and I think this is what Jess is speaking to, is aesthetically, yeah, that's where the creative can really say, hey, look, aesthetically, I like it. The messaging and the images, though, it has to be something that's going to be attractive to the audience to get them to pay attention to what it is that you're trying to tell them. Because the reality is people is that we all have ADD. You're not going to keep our attention. You got three seconds to convince me to give you another 30 seconds 
And in that 30 seconds, you got to, you better convince me to maybe give you another minute and a half. But after two minutes, if you ain't did what you need to do, I'm on to the next thing. So with these flyers, you literally have three seconds to convince somebody to take another step. And you do that with the messaging. You do that with the images. So, you know, the recommendations that we're giving here are great recommendations. But we first need you to understand that if you haven't done that first part, if you haven't done the research, you haven't thought through what it is that you're trying to say and who you're trying to talk to, if you haven't done that, then regardless of the templates with Fiverr, regardless of the images, you putting it together, you sending it out there, it's not going to give you the impact uh, that, you're, that you're looking for. Jess, you agree or disagree with me on that? I agree. You know, um, just like in my example, I was saying for images, like a for sale sign or a house, you know, relating to real estate, but that doesn't really tap into the emotion um, that you can come in an image by showing someone who's extremely excited about the purchase of their home. Or, um, showing a student who's extremely excited about passing their real estate exam or something, you know, from a um, broker. So it's sometimes you want to capture the feeling and those images can do it. I see, well, this is relatable. It's a real estate flyer. Let me throw a house on there or a for sale sign. Go a little further and think creatively, well, how can I tap into the emotions or how can I appeal to that person in the audience? So I totally you know, agree with that. It's something that I've picked up and learned. Um, yeah, absolutely. That that emotion piece is extremely key because when a person, when you're trying to attract somebody, they're attracted to an, a result that you're able to provide for them. That's what they're attracted to. So with your flyers, you, and, and I'm sorry, with your digital marketing, although we're specifically talking about flyers, but this really applies, a lot of what we're talking about applies across multiple platforms, right? Whether social media, whether video, whether flyers, whatever. People are attracted to a result that you're going to provide for them. So for, for instance, buyers, if the result is buying a house, they subconsciously are really trying to get to what that house will do for them emotionally. What feeling will that house provide, right? Is it better quality of life and the feeling now that they get from having a better quality of life? Is it a place to raise my kids? And, a, and that feeling that comes from being able to raise my kids in this place, like what is that feeling? And now what you want to do as a marketer is, is that you want to use whatever platform to, to show this person that I can get you that feeling that you're trying to get. If you're a buyer, I can get you that feeling that you're looking for with buying a house. As a seller, I can get you that feeling that you're going for when it comes to, you know, once you sell that house for whatever your reason is, right? Because people have a multitude of reasons of why they want to buy. They have a multitude of reasons of why they want to sell. So it's these emotions that you're looking to convey to people through your marketing that you are the person that can get that for them. That is what's going to get people to kind of want to come do business with you. Because at the end of the day, consumers, it's about what's in it for them. They are, consumers are selfish. Hey, let's just say it. Nobody want to say it. Consumers are selfish. And guess what? We consumers, we selfish. When I go spend my money, I want what I want, right? So it's the same thing with everybody else. So if that's the case, okay, cool. Not a problem. Let me figure out what you want and let me show you that I'm the person that can get that for you. That's going to help you grow your business. And these things that we're talking about here with layouts, images, these resources, these all can be used to ultimately help you convey that message better and help you attract more business. Awesome. Well, that's good. Perfect. Well, um, moving on, thank you, Mike. Um, Fiverr, okay, for those who uh, don't want to uh, touch a flyer, don't want to have anything to do with it, <laughs> the design elements of it all, um, you can definitely reach out to Fiverr 
and partner with a designer, graphic designer who can do it for you. Um, but I would definitely suggest that you have all the information, like all that you still got to think through, you know, your messaging and what it is that you want to provide to that graphic designer. So that part doesn't go away. Um, but as far as the, like Mr. Davis was saying, the aesthetics and, you know, the visual flow of your flyer, the text, the fonts, the images, some of the images, you know, they may be able to tap into um, that you don't have, you want to be able, you want to utilize. You want to have that to give to them and you want to utilize their service. So Fiverr is definitely a good one. I've used the first four, um, Adobe Express, um, Visme and Pick Maker. Um, definitely look into those, do some research on what it is that they offer. But those are definitely some free resources there for you. Okay. And you know, about Fiverr, Jess, you know, about once, you, Fiverr, Jess, once you, you get to the point to where you can pay somebody to, to, to do the design, consider it. Right, consider it because we y'all are busy. Y'all are realtors. Like you're here to um, help people get in the homes, sell homes, rent homes, apartment. Like that's what you're here to do. You're not necessarily here to design flyers. Like I, I designed flyer. I used to like designing flyers, but once I got to the point to where I could afford paying 15 bucks for a flyer to get designed, not only does it end up looking way better, it gets done a lot faster. Right. So then you can move on to the next thing. So I know sometimes as real estate professionals, and again, this is just through my experience with coaching a bunch of agents, talking to a bunch of agents. I understand the apprehensions that y'all have. And I know one of those apprehensions is spending money. Well, don't look at it as a cost, like look at it as an investment. You know, how much time are you now getting back by spending this $15 or this $50? Like how much time are you redeeming? to where now you can go and do something else to help expand your business. So I just wanted to spend a time saying that because I know, look, I know what y'all are thinking, man. I'm just like y'all. So I know what y'all are thinking. So I definitely want to address some of you all's apprehensions. So I just wanted to jump in there real quick and say that just. Yes, and just for those who aren't familiar with Fiverr, why we suggest it is because you have more access to designers who um, who design for the low, on the low. So you have those who are across seas, out of different countries, who are willing to um, do work for a lot less than what you may find your, your, you know, locally here or um, somewhere else on the internet. So that's why Fiverr is one that we suggest. Moving on, what to include in your flyer. Okay, just some little tips here. You want to use your brand logo. Okay, just examples there. We have the Brooks and Davis uh, logo. You want to have a catchy headline. All right, contact information, your company name, and eye catching visuals that resonate with the message in your flyer. So, for today's flyer that we have for this um, training, we have the mastermind. Uh, series there you have your title you know it just has a visual to exactly what is this what are, well, at least what are they talking about digital marketing and it goes further into it with, with the messaging of it all now we're tapping into the the audience who's your target audience our target audience is realtors they learn how to what do realtors want to do they want to increase your sales trigger in interaction with your brand use innovative methods to create flyers you know, reinforce your brand. These are things that, you know, as realtors, as real estate professionals, that we want to know and need to know when it comes to expanding our business and, and sharing what it is that we offer. So we simply say, learn how. And that's something that you want to consider in your, your headlines is some, a lot of times the how-to, when people are learning, you're just getting straight to it, how to learn. This is what you'll learn. Um, from attending this event. So you're getting, you're giving them bulletins, just quick to, um, to the point of what it is that you'll get. And if you want to include your dates, you know, course location and where they can receive additional, receive additional information. Yes. And, you know, and I got a cheat sheet. I got a cheat sheet, everybody, right? This book is called Advertising Headlines That Make You Rich. I bought this book. I don't even remember when I bought this book. It's by David Garfinkel. And I think he has close to 300 headlines based off of research and science headlines that have worked in advertising for generations, right? Before there was a social media, before there was a TV, when people had to 
convince people or sell something using the newspaper, using magazine. So th this, this has been my cheat sheet, Advertising Headlines That Make You Rich by David Garfunkel. Go out there, get this book, right? Make it easier for yourself when you're coming up with stuff and ideas. They've already done the research and the heavy lifting. So now just find, find something in, in this book and attach that to the flyer. Again, it's talking about you know structure. Yeah, you've come up with the messaging that you want to give out. This helps you deal with the semantics of, of how you can say it in such a way to where unconsciously it resonates with the person that sees it. Um, because the reality is, is, like I said before, you got three seconds, right? So that means through the title of your fly that you have on the flyer and through these bullet points of where you're communicating to the person that sees it, what it's about, you got three seconds to make that thing relative to them to where they want to participate. They want to, or not even going to say participate because really the flyer isn't there to get them to participate. The flyer is there to get them to move to the next step, right? So with most of the, and that's why you need this information in there, you want to send them to the next step, not saying, hey, come, it's go, res go register, right? Or, or go to this, go to the website and learn more, right? Meaning, and that's what you're saying is, give me more than three seconds. <laughs> give me another 27 seconds to tell you more about what this thing is about. So, you know, uh, sometimes when people are designing flyers and putting flyers out there, they're designing them in such a way to where they're trying to convince the person in the flyer to come to the event. That's too much. That's too much information. Like when people get confused, they don't do nothing. Right? That's the thing about humans. When we get confused, if I look at your flyer and it's confusing, then I ain't going to do nothing. I'm just going to throw it away. Right? So you want to keep it simple and you want to guide them to the next step. And then, and then, so it's like you're feeding them pieces to get to your overall result, which is attending your thing or hiring, you know, hiring you to do business with them. There are steps to this. So that's kind of what this flyer piece is about. You know, yeah, you want the logo, you want the headline. And where it says contact information, yeah, you want the contact information to an, what I found lately is that people aren't really calling or emailing if they got questions, right? They wanna go somewhere. So that's why social media, having a platform in place where you can send people through your flyers to go to the social media to learn more about an event. Video, see now we're talking about how you introduce some of these other elements into your strategy, right? I can use a video to explain what the event is about. So now I've got the flyer and the flyer is telling you to go watch the video. And then after you watch the video, maybe we can use the video to convince you to register, right? So it's, that's what this strategy stuff is all about. And I'm gonna keep saying it because I need you all to understand that this marketing, it's a, it's a strategy. It's not just a single element. It's not just social media. It's not just flyers. It's not just video. It's the compilation of them all and using them in a particular way to achieve a result that you're looking to achieve. So um, again, David Garf advertising, uh, Shay, I'm gonna get Shay to type it into the, uh, the chat for everybody. But books, I mean, a lot of the stuff that I'm talking to you all about and that Jess is talking to you all about, we've watched, we've read books. We've, we've attended seminars. We've paid consultants. Like I paid people for a lot of this information that I'm giving you guys now. So, you know, take your, take your notes, man. Capitalize off of it. Go ahead, Jess. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for that book. Um, for those, definitely get the book. There's also um, resources, of course, online that you can use just to kind of give you some inspiration and examples. Um, something I was gonna say, oh, lost my train of thought with something that you had said earlier, but hopefully it'll come back to me um, in regards to the flyers. Um, gosh, I wanted that. All right, well, let's move. <laughs> let's move on um, here to the next slide. See. Catchy headlines, hooks, and pain points, okay? Um, 
what is a catchy headline? So just moving on, that kind of goes there with Mr. Davis was saying there. Um, it says, this is where you either capture their attention or you'll have your flyer thrown in the trash. And that's so true. If it's too cluttered, you know, too much text on it, or if the text is not visually, um, well, maybe they can't read it, or it's just, it doesn't feel good to them. <laughs> it's just like, ah, I don't even know what this is about. It's just, it's just too much. They will throw it away in the trash. So you want to keep it simple and effective. All right. Your headline should contain a, um, a benefit or it should generate interest. Okay. So that's when we're tapping in, when you're talking about, when you're saying a benefit, you know, how can this, my target audience benefit from this? Or what is it that they're struggling with? What is the pain point? What is it that they need? And then to generate interest, what is it that they like? Or what is it, um, what would appeal to that target audience? Here's some examples. Um, go ahead, Mike. Well, I was just going to say, always think, always think that whoever's looking at your stuff is thinking about them. Mm -hmm. Who's looking at your stuff? And I know, I mean, I'm saying selfish. You know, it's a negative connotation when it comes to selfish. The people are just thinking about themselves, right? So since they're thinking about them, that's how you're going to attract them is by giving them something that they want. You got to be thinking like them, like that's the only way that it's going to work. Go ahead, Jess. Absolutely. Um, some examples here uh, are things like five reasons why John Smith should be your real estate agent. Okay, that's something that you, you could say. It's just give people like numbers, something simple. It's not a lot. It's not 15. It's quick five reasons um, why John should be your real estate agent. Next one is, here's how you can have a full-time career and be a real estate agent. All right, that's definitely something that an agent may be interested in, okay? How can I do both, you know, or should I do both? You know, that's a question that we actually received recently um, from an agent. And then um, next, if you're tired of worrying about unexpected rent increases, there goes your pain point, call John Smith to start the home buying process today. Okay, and it's giving them a call, a call of action. It's doing a lot there within, even within the headline. So a headline is very important. Um, there's a number, there's numerous um, different, like you said, statistics that show which ones appeal to more people or which ones that give you the best uh, interaction. So definitely do your research on that, pick up that book so that you can start utilizing some of these uh, strategies there within your, your marketing. And as you do it more, these, what we're saying, Mr. Davis saying is strategies, it really then starts to become like this formula that you use um, through, throughout the process is cont on a continual basis, you know? So just create that formula. Okay, this is like how we had on our flyers there. We know that we're gonna put the title there. We're gonna have a title. We know we're gonna make it something that you all can um, see visually that's appealing. And then we're gonna give you some bulletin points. You know, three or four, five little bulletins, probably three that tell you exactly, okay, what is this about? And then next, your call to action, where do we need to send you? All right. Here's another um, example there for you. Um, we have our title, Can't Miss Opportunity. What are we doing? Come meet and learn. What is it about? Financial literacy workshop. Okay. And you just have, you have some bulletin points of here. So what it is that you'll be learning within this workshop? Who is it? The information about this the presenter I catching statement here and I home ownership I'm gonna jump in there too in there so too. this is this is where I kind of I I I stray a little bit I'm just gonna say a little bit um I some people like having the picture on the fly the picture of the person that um and it sometimes it works sometimes it don't the the time that it works is if the audience is familiar with who that person is, right? For instance, if I'm doing a, you know, I was thinking about it today, but, you know, obviously it was too late, that it would have been a good idea for me to put my picture on today's flyer, right? Because that is letting the whole organization know that, you know, I'm participating in this particular flyers. I mean, uh, training, especially since we've had trainings and, and I, I wasn't the presenter, I wasn't participating. So in that particular situation, it, it made sense to put my picture on the flyer because the people that are getting the flyer are familiar with who I am. 
But that doesn't mean that every time you put a fly, and this is something that realtors do a lot of, everything that they're doing, they're putting their picture on. Well, you know, the person that gets the flyer, if they don't know you, then you you have zero nothing. Like you, you're 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 not you're not creating any benefit to the person looking at your flyer by you being on there if they don't know who you are, right? So take that into consideration as well, especially when it comes to the design, right? You only get three seconds. So you don't want to be a distraction on the flyer, right? You don't want your picture being on there and they, oh, look, that's a nice tie. And then there goes your three seconds and then they don't read nothing else on the flyer, right? So you want to take that into consideration as well that you're only going to get a certain amount of time as far as their attention. Don't put stuff on there as a distraction, especially if the people that are looking at the flyer don't have a familiarity with you. So, with you, so your picture being on there is not going to be a benefit uh, for what you're trying to achieve. So I just want to, I want to talk a little bit about the pictures on digital marketing as well. Yeah, that's something that, uh, that's a good point. I would, um, it can go two ways for sure, <laughs> for sure. But I can see it being selective on what it is that you're putting your, your picture on. You know, like you said, it doesn't have to be everything. The reason why I say, yeah, I kind of would because just that also allows some awareness. Though they may not know who you are right now, they may be able to get to know you. But just they be able, they, they see you on multiple things if you are very active. Um, say if you were presenting, that okay, you are active and you do quite a bit within the community that may be a time where you want to, there are times where you may want to do it, times that, like he said, is not effective. Okay. Here's another example. You need a title company that has tools and resources that ensure your success in real estate. This is a thing that we're doing tomorrow. Okay, as agents, telling, we need a title company that has those tools and resources that can ensure your success in real estate. All right. And when you come, this is what you're going to learn. You're going to learn access to real estate. It's number one closing cost app. Get guaranteed accuracy, honesty, and efficiency with your clients' trans transactions. Customized products and services that help your clients close on time. That's major. Closing on time is major within our industry. So that's just an example there that you can use. Um, Sometimes it's going to be challenging to try to come up with a benefit of why somebody should participate in what you have going on, right? Uh, because, you know, we want to encourage you as real estate professionals, you, you do need to be doing events, right? Think about an open house, right? Why should somebody come to your open house? You know, what, what, you know, a lot of times people that show up at open houses because they were already, they were driving around in the area. So there's something that uh, has drawn them to that particular neighborhood. They happen to be riding around. They saw one of your signs, boom, and they pulled up. That's what happens in most instances. Most people, when they're marketing their open houses, you know, they'll put it on HAR, you know, they'll put the signs out there. But then sometimes people, you know, they want to market their open houses on social media or they want to send email flyers out. All right. Well, now, if you do that when it comes to your open house, now you have to entice someone that's not familiar with that neighborhood, that's not familiar with the amenities of the location. You have to entice that person to want to come to your house or you uh, so now you have to approach that differently when it comes to your flyer, right? You just can't put, oh, here's a picture of the house. This is how much we asking. Come to the open house on this day. A person's not going, because now what you're doing is you're asking the person that sees your flyer to go out there and do some, to do the research, to go find out if it makes sense. Is this a location that they want to be in? Is this a house that they want? Like you're making them go do that. And guess what? They're not going to do. They're, gonna, they're not going to do that. So what they're going to end up is not coming to the open house, right? So you have to take into consideration what platform, where you're presenting your marketing, and then that's going to dictate what kind of messaging that you need to have on it, right? If I'm doing an open house, 
then I better put some information on there about the location and the amenities of that location and what's good about that location and how are the schools in that location. Like give something that, in, because that's typically how people pick houses. It's, it's usually, again, like I said before, what is that house going to do for them? And, and most of it has to do with location. Like y'all heard it before, location, location, location. But you need to understand why is location so powerful when it comes to real estate. It's because most people are looking for a particular quality of life. Is this closer to my job? So now my commute ain't as long, so now I can spend more time with my family, right? Is this close to the school? This got good, this got good schools. I put my kids in that school, so then they're going to learn. They're going to grow up to be successful citizens. Like, it's always more to the story. You got to think past what's next in the story when you determine how you're going to attract people to what it is that you're trying to do. So open houses was just one thing that came to my mind. But there's other events that you be doing, Neighbor, you know, garage sales, um, you know, parties, you know, things that you want to put out in neighborhoods or out in the universe to be attracting people to come and do what you want them to do with you. You got to think about how the, how the people are going to receive what you're putting out. Like you got to do that. And sometimes it's going to be hard, right? Sometimes it's going to be difficult to finding out what benefit can I come up with to attract somebody to come here? But what we're saying is, is you got to do it because you want to get that investment of your time. If you're going to spend your time, you want to make sure that you get a return on your time being spent and you can get the results that you're looking to get by doing it. Good stuff, good stuff. Have any questions? Now's the time for questions. If there's any, I see we have four. All right, Moshe, thanks for putting that in there in the chat. Go ahead and unmute your mics, anyone, if you have any questions or about today from today's training or any um, input, or just put it in the chat there for us. Yeah, this is a great time. We have some time, so we definitely want to hear from you all, and you all ask your questions. Uh, and there are probably some other things that we'll show you as well. Right. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead and put that sales uh, seller website back up. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, you guys were talking about flyers. How, how do we just send or make our flyer for our social media and put it on Instagram, TikTok, and all of that stuff? Or do we do number two, send it out to um, our potential? Uh, I guess, list of people that we may have contacted before. Right. What do we do? I mean, how do we get the people to know about what's going on in our life as far as the flyers? flyers. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, there's multiple platforms there that you want, that you can utilize. But one thing that we spoke about in um, earlier in the training was when being intentional uh, as far as identifying your target market. Right. Um, right. something that you may want to think through is well who and it also said well who is going to see this so right. considering like all of your social media if you have a lot of friends or family there of course you okay. put your social media platforms but maybe you don't use all of them so maybe it's just instagram and facebook that you seem to be your best return or in, on interactions but of course you want to expand and use all of your resources so if you do have a mail data list a mail list, you know, some emails, you may want to consider putting it in constant contact or MailChimp so that you can use that as a way to distribute um, your flyers in print. That's another distribution outlet. Uh -huh. Hey, here's a great idea. Here's a great idea, Jess. Why don't you go to our constant contact and log into constant contact? Oh, that's next week's training. I'm sorry. All right, that's next week's training. So good. <laughs> I gave we gave y'all a taste of what's gonna be happening next. So Brenda, you definitely need to be coming on the next week's training because that's where you're gonna really see the plan distribution when it comes uh -huh. to how we send the market now. All right. right. I'm sorry. I, I okay. jumped the gun. I got so excited about it, Shay. I was jumping the gun. <laughs> Yeah, there are, there are several outlets, but just to name a few, of course, you can text message your, your, your flyers, uh, social media, email, constant contact. What else could you do? You know, we said print. Um, so those are just five right there that I named on how you would right. get your audience. 
any mailers or anything like that. Do they actually do the door knocking too much anymore? I don't know. You know, shooting this heat, but um, <laughs> no, but you know, they, I've heard some that do. Um, now we do encourage, especially for when it comes to open houses, you know, you want to go ahead and knock 20 doors to your left, right, maybe go to, um, to the next street. Um, so that would be an opportunity in time that you would maybe door knock or maybe you leave buyers on a person's door. Um, but yeah. How often should you make and distribute uh, flyers? Okay, should so. Once a month, once. So that, you know, you got to get your strategy kind of together when it comes to that and how often it is that you want to do it. Now, like for instance, we just recently done a mail out and this for postcard mail out. Um, so we had to create and design that aspect of it, but you just kind of create your formula. Like we do, do it on a weekly basis right now. And then you may want to switch and after you do it on a weekly basis for maybe four weeks or six weeks, you may want to start to do it month to month. You know, so those are just different you kind of got to sit down a little bit more to kind of identify. You're looking at budget, all those things um, matter when it comes to distribution, especially with print and mail out. Uh -huh. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Does anyone else have uh, But yeah, so Shay, Shay got me uh, to understand. So this is part one. This is, this is about creating the flyer. We want to provide information as related to the creating the flyer, and then next week it's going to be about the distribution. So all the distribution plans. So next week's going to be super powerful as well. I'm, that's going to be a good one on how to distribute and how to set things up when it comes to letting people know or letting the people know, or and I guess building your databases and things like that. Uh -huh. So do we have homework for next week? Meaning making a flyer at home and present it next week. You know, that would be bomb. Oh, y'all homework. <laughs> y'all homework is to schedule coaching sessions. <laughs> homework is everybody on here needs to schedule their coaching session. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna push you to That's work. Yeah, I want to see your flyers. <laughs> There'll be times for that. We may do a little design uh, training with that. Any other questions? Because remember, keep in mind, most of what we talked about here was strategy. Mm -hmm. So you going home and just designing a flyer, I mean, what are you designing for? Like, what are you promoting? Like, what are you trying to accomplish? Like, all of that needs to happen first versus just going through the exercise of creating it. And what I do know about the digital marketing series, I think I'm on the books. Once it's all said and done, where I, I come back, and, and that session is going to be about creating the marketing strategy, putting it all together. So that's going to be a good one as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. What other questions or comments? Now, I noticed I tried to use uh, Google Photos before mm -hmm. for something, and some of those photos cost money. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so some of them do. You know, there are yeah, some workarounds. I to make get, that statement. That's all. Yeah, they 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 do. <laughs> you, that's when you utilize the free resources for sure. Right, right. Google right. is definitely one of them. Um, and there's some little tricks, you know. Uh -huh. But see, look, I, I said it earlier. I know y'all be apprehensive about stuff. <laughs> look, if that picture, if that picture, if that picture is that the picture best picture, picture for what you're trying to convey, buy that picture. Right. Uh -huh. Don't always revert to, oh, I can't get it because it costs. Like if it's getting the job done for what you like, you remember you put all this work in, you research, you uh -huh. come up with an idea, you come up with a concept, and this uh -huh. is the perfect picture for that. But it cost me some money. Hey, buy that picture and, and bring it on home. Uh-huh. Okay. Good questions, Brenda. Good questions. What else you got? Or does anyone else have anything? What no. questions do y'all have? And while they're doing that, just pull up the website, pull up the sellers. All right. So we can kind of use that as an example when it talks about research strategy and all this stuff. That's the buyers. And look, you guys go to the website. 
we created the website like this for a particular reason because we wanted you all to be able to use it when you're attracting business. So click on sellers. Just click on sellers. Yeah. Sellers now. Perfect. Okay, it's there now. Okay, so when we were thinking about how do you attract sellers, what do sellers want to know about? Well, they're going to want to know what you're going to do to sell their house. So that's where we came up with the flip book. It's about um, what they're going to sell their house. We thought about, well, a seller's probably going to want to hear testimonies about what some of the other people have said. Because right? remember, the seller is the one that's paying Right. You know, we're the one where you got to negotiate. That's why a lot of people don't want to work with sellers, because you got to convince the seller to uh, <laughs> pay you. And, you know, with buyers, you don't necessarily have to convince the buyer. Well, you don't have to convince the buyer to pay. you. So it's an easier sale. Our new agents, when they first come in here, they like to start with working with buyers. Well, you know, since you are going to convince this person you know, use utilizing testimonies and, and, you know, comments from past clients. It's an effective strategy. So that's why we added the this uh, video that talked about ratings and, and, and testimonies and things like that. Um, so then again, you go down, you see the little flip book that talks about, you know, the process of what we're going to be doing to sell their home. Scroll down some more, Jess. And then, you know, for us, it was all about, um, it was all about making it convenient and easy for them to hire us if they were ready to go. So now when you look at what we're ready to serve and under, you know, now that you are selling a home, if you would like Davis to put your home up for sale in front of more active buyers than any other real estate agency. So that was something that, again, took a lot of thought on what was going to be our message to the consumer that could differentiate us from everybody else? And that was, we're going to put your house in front of more eyes, right? If I'm a seller, to put my house, to give my house the best chance of getting sold, I need to be in, I need to be in front of as many eyeballs, as many active buyers as possible. So that's how we came up with how we would approach sellers and the message on enticing sellers to want to do business with us over other brokerages, other companies. So there's a lot of thought that went into what could be the statement that we could come up with to be able to do that. Uh, again, like I said, they can, they can actually fill out the paperwork online. All right, scroll down some more, Jess. Um, and then what we wanted to create, we wanted to create, um, obviously we wanted to create a value or benefit if they hired us. And that's where the free home warranty piece comes in. So now if a person hires us to sell their house, they're able to get a free home warranty. Well, again, that's something else that differentiates us from a competitive position. And then we had our free neighborhood buying activity report and our free property condition home evaluation. Well, those are actually things that we provide prior to them even hiring us. So a person that doesn't hire us, we're open to giving them a neighborhood buying activity report. A person that's not hiring us, so this is just for them, to cons just for considering us. You know, we'll come and do an in-home evaluation of the home. Now, what do those two things do? Those two things put us in a um, put us in a stronger position to get hired. Right? Remember, I talked about earlier. Sometimes, like it's levels to this. Right? You come to the website, you see the website, you're still not sold. All right. Well, don't hire us. Let us just come offer you a free neighborhood report. So now, once you look at the neighborhood report, then that right there. Well, let us come to your house and meet with you. All right. So then the, we meet with you. Okay. So now hire us, right? See, it's levels two versus, oh, go to my website and everything about my website is you hiring us. Well, no, you can hop it. Go to our website, see what we're about, right? Maybe you're in us doing a free home evaluation, but the house. 
All right, well, just schedule your home evaluation. That's all. You know, you ain't got to do nothing more than that. Just schedule the home evaluation. We'll just look at it at the home evaluation. All right, let's schedule a time for me to come back and do a listen appointment with you. Right, you ain't got to hire me. You know, it, you know, we, we, we taking our time. We taking steps. So that's the thing about the new consumer. Like, we don't want to be made to do nothing. And we don't want to be rushed. We want to take our time and decide. We ready to decide. Right. So because that's the new consumer, because and the reason that the consumer can do that is because they have so much access to information. Google gives knows everything. So now the consumer can take as much time as they want to consider, research, learn, do all of that stuff. And they want to do it. So you and you're not going to be pushing them to do nothing. So you cannot, so from a marketing standpoint, you have to design your marketing in such a way to where the consumer feels comfortable taking their time, coming to the buying decision that you want for them, which is to hire you, right? So I said all that to say, this thing is not, as, it's not, it's not easy, right? But you can keep it, we can make it simple, but marketing is not easy. It's not. And as real estate professionals, we need to stop approaching it as if it's always just something that I can put together and send it out. No, you got to put some thought to this thing. You got to put some creativity to this thing if you're going to want to get the results that you're looking to get. All right. Okay. Any, any questions, comments about anything that we talked about? No. Okay. I also, I also would like to hear from you all about, you know, was this valuable? Is this good content? Or, you know, do you feel like this is a good use of your time coming onto this training and learning today? Are we in the, are we in the right vein when it comes to delivering information to you all? I want to hear back from you. Give me some feedback. Excellent information and selling tips. Thank you, Terry. I think it's very good information, but I'm more of a visual person. That's why I said, oh, do you guys want us to put a, a, a flyer together for next week or whatever? Because sometimes I will listen to these, uh, these um, whatever you call it, studies or whatever, mm -hmm. and I will take notes. But if I'm not going to use that information right away, I may forget some of the key points, even though I have notes. You understand? But to answer your yeah, question, absolutely. I think it was a good, very good uh, presentation. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So what we need to come up with in our next coach, coaching session, Brenda, is an event or something that you can promote and then go ahead and put everything that you learn and we can go ahead and create that flyer. We just got to, we got to, we got to come up with a reason to create a flyer. Right. I'm doing a vacation Bible school with the kids at church now in the evening. And uh, I was thinking about Friday is the last day, actually. So I was thinking about how do I reach out to these little kids' parents to let them know about me, you know, and I've been, you know, kind of thinking about a, trying to a creative way of doing that, but I haven't come up with it yet to be perfectly Are you teaching honest. the class? Yeah, I'm helping one of the teachers, yeah. I would definitely incorporate maybe some real estate within it, something they can send back to their, maybe some type of real estate project or art or something, you know. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, the, I wanted, the little kids don't even have, they don't even have children's Bibles at the church, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. I was thinking about possibly, you know, don't buying the little children's Bible, huh? Did somebody say something? I think that would, may have been an accident. Oh, okay. You know, and possibly, you know, putting a flyer with it or, but then I don't want to seem so pushy either. I don't know. Well, I think, don't overthink it, Brent. Okay. If you want to put, if you want to give something to the little kids, yeah. give something yeah. to the little kids and just say it's sponsored by Brenda the Realtor or something like that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, and then look at it from this perspective. The goal, your audience, 
you, you're actually kind of making it easier for you because your audience is the parent of a child that comes to vacation Bible school. Right? Correct. Well, having what does that kind of person, what would be attractive to that kind of person in the event they're in the need of a real estate service? What would be an attractive message for that kind of person, a person that sends their kid to a vacation Bible school? What would be an attractive I, message right. Frankly, for I was that thinking person about, to hear? And where could I send that person to maybe okay. put a holding pattern or give them the ability to where when they're ready to engage me, they can engage me? So that's the kind of thought process that, that we need to go into. But again, that's something that you and I can work on together in our coaching. So you want me to start the coaching again? Will you come back to Katie or you want me to come to the office there? Hey, it don't matter to me. Okay, I, I'll sign I'll be, up. I'll be there for. I, I mean, like I said, I can, I can go, I can go there on Thursday, or we can do it via Zoom. Whatever's right. available in in, a, in a ten to eight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Zoom might be good too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, good. Well, do we have anything else? I asked a question on group me yesterday, but nobody answered. Uh, I was looking for was the, a, question? the question was, is there a particular site besides uh, HAR for um, duplexes? I'm looking for a duplex for a client. And the only thing I didn't see, I didn't see anything on HAR, you know, under the one to four uh, properties, you know, in, in the Houston area. I know they're picked up very, very fast, but is there another site that I can go to? It seems like there's another place I can go to see if there's any uh, rental properties or duplexes or multifamily properties. Uh, easier yeah, nah, site. There's, there's not another site that competes with HAR. Now, HAR is going to be the most exhaustive place for you to go get that kind of information. Yeah, I went there. Okay. And you were looking under single family, you said? Yeah, she wants a, either a single family that, you know, she can use as a rental. I sent her, I did send her some single family properties uh, yesterday. I sent her three different properties, mostly in the Missouri City area or Richmond or, um, you know, the West Houston area, basically. And I did find a duplex, which was already uh, up. I mean, it's already taken, but I sent it to her anyway. It's in a leaf just for, you know, her information that, you know, that she wanted a duplex that's already fixed up. Uh, it costs X number of dollars, you know, just to, you know, let her know how much it's going to cost, basically. The family but again, that, that's something that we can, we yeah. can work on off site. Yeah, uh, yeah. Don't yeah. Okay, yeah. That's cap true. everybody into the training. Right. Okay. Um, but I have a but, I'm sorry. It's, I'm sorry, it's a quick one. I know it's kind of away from the training, but no, do we, we know of any realtors in Shreveport, Louisiana? Oh, yeah. She had that question yesterday. I yeah. don't. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't know, but Terry, a good a good uh, place that you can go go to the NARAB website, NARAB.org, NARAB.com. Yeah, that's right. You can right. actually yeah. search for realtors that may be in the Shreveport area. Oh, okay. That are black. Okay. So NARAB, N-A-R-E-B dot C-O-M. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh-huh. All right. Anything else? No. All right. Well, excellent job, Jess, on the presentation. I was just supposed to be here being a co-pilot. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you both did great. Thank you. Thank you for you all's participation and feedback. Oh, this right here, the no BS, this guy right here, Dan Kennedy. If you really want to know about marketing, mm -hmm. there's a series of books that really go into depth when it comes to marketing and copyright and things like that. 
I think uh, you should uh, go put it in. Put that in there too, Shay. I'm going to have Shay put that into the chat as well. That's another book. Um, that one right there was specific to the affluent. So if you want to, you know, a lot of people, agents want to, you know, do luxury real estate. And so that means you got to attract those kind of clients. Well, that book talked about how do you attract, you know, luxury like that. But he has books across the board when it comes to marketing. So Dan Kennedy, um, look into him, get his books as well. I have one more question. I was looking at a video from another agent today and uh, they were saying, how do you, how, how would I market myself to a potential seller to get them to choose me? I am a new agent, so I don't have experience in, you know, background area of any sales or any, you know what I mean? So would I say like, okay, Brooks and Davis has 20 years of experience and we work together as a team. And if I have any questions, they can answer those questions for me. So it's not just me selling myself to the person, you know, say, okay, well, I'm a new agent because they will ask, well, what, what is your experience in, you know, but, uh, selling a house or having someone buy a house for you? I mean, from you, you know what I mean? So I don't know how to sell myself per se, if some, if I did a buyer's consultation, I know I'm, I'm talking in circles, but <laughs> I can see your eyes rolling. <laughs> but he's did thinking. You understand? <laughs> I was going to say, he's thinking. <laughs> no, he's, he, I remember what he said earlier, come with the question. If you take too long, then I'm thinking about something else or going to the next thing. The question is, if someone wants to hire me as a realtor, whether they're a buyer or a seller, okay? How do I sell myself by telling them how much experience I have as a agent? How do I say, you know, choose Brenda Mullen because of this? What do I say to them? So, the presumption, the presumption that you're making is, is that a buyer cares how much experience you have and that a seller cares how much experience you have. Okay, so now what they really, what they really care about is there's a result that they're looking for and they may or may not believe that a person that's been in the business longer has a better chance of getting that result for them. So that's really what... That's the question they're really asking that question. All right. So your question to me is, how do I answer the question of Brenda Mullins can get you the result that you're looking for? That's the real question that you want to answer That's the for question. those people, right? Correct. Okay. So don't even worry about experience because you've been connected to Brooks and Davis and the resources of Brooks and Davis and the uh, intangibles that Brenda Mullins has, Brenda Mullins is going to work harder for you than any other realtor is going to work for you to help you achieve. Brenda Mullins is, you give me your house to list, Brenda Mullins is going to do everything possible to get that house in front of as many active buyers that can be done. See, none of it has to do with experience. The seller, the seller cares, can you get my house up? And then they're going to want how are you going to get my house sold? They don't care about experience. The buyer wants, I want to buy a house. Can you help me buy a house? Right? So they don't care about those things. I know that there's these misconceptions in the marketplace that trip up new agents. But at the end of the day, they don't, they don't care about how much you know. They don't care about how long you've been in the business. Like that stuff. But that's what realtors do when they're marketing themselves. They market themselves with saying, oh, I've been in the business for 30 years. Oh, I've been in, uh, um, I've been, in, I know the wonderful family contract front and back. Like the, the consumer will entertain you when you say that, but that's not what they're using to make a decision on if they hire you or not. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. All right. So, so we, 
we would approach it coming through the back door, Brenda. Okay. What other questions y'all have? Those are some good questions. I was rolling my eyes at her. Brenda, I wasn't rolling my eyes. I was listening. <laughs> Sorry. I was I was talking faster than I was thinking. And I gotta work on that. I do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you process, you process loud. I process out loud too. <laughs> All right, any other questions from anybody? See, Brenda, you're gonna be good. See, this is this is a uh, uh, a model that I, I feel like you all should be paying attention to. Because if you have questions, you need to ask them. Because this is how you're gonna learn the business. You know, having that, I love the assertive nature has because she wants to know something. It's that same curiosity that I talked about early when I started the training. You need to have that curiosity of a three, four, five-year-old. When they got a question, they're going to ask you. And it don't matter where you at. And it don't matter what's going on. Right? <laughs> they, don't, they don't understand any of those nuances that we have. They want to do something, they're going to go find out, especially if you sit there next to them. That's how y'all need to approach things. So when you have somebody on, on here like me, and I'm saying, hey, what you what you, what questions you have? What you thinking about? What situations and stuff that you got going on? Hey, raise your hand. Don't walk away from this training not knowing something because you have access to the knowledge base, like right now. So, with that being said, anybody got any other questions? Any things that they're dealing with? Anything? I have one any more. I don't Come want on, to. Brother. I don't want to take up all your space, but I was given this lead a couple of days ago about the woman that wants to find the duplex or whatever in Texas or whatever. So I jumped on it. I called her right away. I asked her what she wanted, how much she would spend, and all of that stuff. So yesterday I did send her, like I said earlier, three or four different rental houses possible rental houses and then I did send her a duplex that was already sold but now I'm thinking maybe I'm not going to reach out to her again until next week and then next week what I may do is send her some lending information what do you think lender information well yeah I wouldn't have sent her any duplexes until we determine her, if she's even in a position to buy a duplex? Like, do you know if she's even in a position to buy a duplex? I, I, well, we did not go through her finances or didn't get her, you know, all of that background, but I believe she is because it's somebody that yeah, I've known like for that. years and I know that she probably could afford it, yeah. But, you but the duplex was sold anyway, but I just wanted her to have the information about, about how much it, it would probably cost. So it was all well, you don't you don't there. you don't want to guess right so right. this is the illustration that i always use it's like you're going to the doctor and if you go to the doctor and tell the doctor i'm sick and if the doctor immediately says okay go talk to the nurse and they're gonna give you a prescription now you haven't told the doctor nothing he ain't asked you no additional questions he don't know nothing about your, your health history um he ain't asked you no questions about um what's wrong, where the pain is. He didn't ask you nothing. You went in there, you said, I'm sick. And he said, go talk to the nurse, they're gonna write your prescription. Now, how would you feel as a patient if that's what happened? Yeah, I would, yeah. Well, right. I guess, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but I just felt like I needed to send her some information just to give her an idea of what's out that's what there. I'm saying so so what you're saying is as the doctor I just felt the need that I need to give you a prescription right that's true I understand what you're saying but you ain't did you, you have not you have not diagnosed her her situation at all to even know that the prescription you're giving her is the best thing for her correct right well right. when I talked right when I talked to her on the phone she said um no worries no no rush or anything like that I'm just curious to see what's out there. If I see something that I want, you know, it's not like, 
okay, I want to buy this within the next three months, or, you know, it could be up to a year. It's so, never, Brenda, they never, come, they never come to you saying, I'm ready to go right now. It's always, right. I'm thinking about this. Right. Right. I've had people say, I'm buying a house next year and we buy my house. They get under contract in 60 days. Right, right. Because right. most people, when they come at you like that, what they're really asking you without saying it is they want information. Right. Yes. So they don't have enough information. So they don't, right now, most people, when they come to you, they're going to be coming looking for information to help them make a decision that they have been thinking about. Right. That's, they're going to come at you all like that all the time. So the first thing that you're going to have to deter, help them with is to get them the information of financially where they need to be or how it needs to be for them to even be able to purchase what it is they're looking to purchase. So that's the, the first thing we got to get figured out. Uh -huh. The second thing we got to kind of get figured out is, and you want to know this as a professional, is like, well, what's their reason? Like, why do you want, why do you want to buy a duplex? Remember, there's more to the story. There's always more to the story. So, you know, what's your, what's your motivation? What's motivating you for a duplex, a duplex in Houston, a duplex in 2022? Like what's behind that decision, right? Mm -hmm. Because now that'll help you offer them some additional information that they may need. Right. Um, so you got to become curious when talking to them and begin diagnosing them before you jump into offering a solution mm -hmm. or a prescription to them. Does well, she told me, I understand, but she did tell me what her reason was. She had been watching some YouTube uh, guy in, in the Atlanta buying rental properties or duplexes. And, you know, it's always something that she wanted to do. She told me that she didn't know what her budget was, but she was thinking she didn't want to spend over $200,000, basically. And I just wanted to send her information to let her know that she's not going to find anything much at that price or, you know, it's going to be more than that. So that's the only reason I sent her that information. So I understand what you're saying. You're saying, let's find out if she can qualify for a second home mortgage. Right? And let's, just, let's, let's dig some more. I'm saying let's dig some more. Let's find some more. Let's find out more of why. You know, you said she watched a YouTube video, saw a guy in Atlanta, he bought duplexes. So then that put that thought in her head because it's something that she's always wanted to do. Well, why right. is it something that she's always wanted to do? What's so attractive to her about a duplex? Well, I think what's attractive to her buying a duplex is she probably has money in the bank that she doesn't like just sitting there and she wants to invest. And, okay, so this is what, okay, so let me, I'm going to say back to you what you just said to me, and, you, and we can't do this in real estate. Right. You said, I think okay. that what she probably wants to do right. is she, she probably has all this money, she probably wants to, like, you can't do that. Like, you need to ask her what it is she wants to okay. do. Okay. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like, we can't speculate. Yeah, I do. I understand. Yeah, but we do that. Just you, Brenda. They all do that. Right. And look, because I get it. They come to me and they tell me. And it's like, well, she probably, well, I'll say, well, why does she want to buy a house? Well, I think she wants to do it because of this, this, and that. Like, so did you ask the ladies? No. <laughs> why does she want to buy a house? <laughs> no, I did not. So it ain't just you. But, but we can't do that. We cannot do that. Okay. All right. So what my recommendation for you is dig some more, ask some more questions, find out for sure what's okay. driving all of this. Where is it coming from? Oh. Okay. All right. And what will that do for me when I find out that information? So it, the same thing it does, it'll, it'll put you in a position to where you know what to prescribe. So okay. you're asking uh, you're asking questions so you can kind of determine a, a, the best way forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So now you're obviously what I'm saying is once you get all this information, then you and I are going to get back together or whoever your mentor. I don't know. But you'll get connected with somebody that knows what to do with the information that you capture. And then we'll put together. We'll either say, well, you need to go back and get more information 
or all right, based on what you presented, this is the best way forward for her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But do you think I should reach out to her and just send her that um, information from one of the guys, um, Mr. What is it, Mel Simmons or uh, the guy from Georgia? just to give her information if she needed to talk to anybody about her financial situation or just leave it be except to ask more questions I just go back i would just go back and find out and again it's probably it doesn't have to just be one conversation like it could be multiple conversations before we move to the next step of connecting her with a lender okay so what i'm saying for you to do is is go back and just find out get curious why she wants to do this and find okay. out her reason. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It may take multiple conversations for her to really just reveal to you, because she may not even know. A lot of times when you're talking to people, they don't even know why or what they're doing. You have to yeah. help them come to a realization. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Was that helpful? Yeah, it was helpful, but part of my brain is saying, what difference does it actually make? It's part of my brain is saying that. And then the other part is saying, I don't know. I don't quite understand why it's so relevant, but it'll sink in. <laughs> it'll make sense. Well, no, but I'm gonna tell you why, why your brain is saying it because you've been licensed how long? I've been licensed, I was about a year with Keller Williams and then with you guys since uh, the end of April. But I mean, I've been and licensed, but I have not been, I, when I was sick, I was keeping my uh, you know, license in effect. So I renewed it several times, but actually doing right. the work as an agent. You understand? So, right, so how many transactions? I only had, Two rental transactions, basically, with Keller okay. Williams. Right. Yeah. And I was sick. So I, had another, I had another one that I had to give to another agent, and they bought a new home. But I couldn't. Right. The new home. Well, this is for, this is to, to your question of one side of your brain and the other side of your brain. And this is really for everybody. All right. The reason that you're having a challenge accepting what I'm saying is because you're pro I'm I'm delivering a, from a base of a thousand transactions. Like I got about a thousand transactions under my belt. So I have this humongous library of experience that I'm pulling from when I talk to you. Right. And then when you but when you hear you're not hearing it from a library of experience you're hearing it from a library that doesn't have all of this experience from which i'm pulling from so for you it sounds weird because you don't have anything to relate it to does right sense? yes it does okay so when you run into that situation and again brenda this just ain't for you this is because it happens a lot and I get it now. And it used to frustrate me at first. I'm like, man, why people just don't listen to what I'm telling? Like, I got all this, I did all this stuff. But the reality is I've had to do it myself. Once I trust the source, whether it makes sense to me or not, but I but they're credible to me. Like I'm saying, you're credible. Like you got the prestige, you got the proof, you did it. So you're credible. So right. whether I understand what you're telling me or not. I just got to do it because I vetted you, you're credible, you're a credible source. I don't have the experience. So I just got to receive what you tell me to do and then I'm going to do it. And then if it doesn't work out, then I go back to the source and say, hey, I did what you told me to do. It didn't work. Or it didn't get the result or this result, like how, how, do you, how do you answer for what you told me to do and it didn't work out? But in my, in my past, whenever I've done that, and I did what somebody told me to do, even though it didn't make sense, it always worked out. Okay. <laughs> I set up a training session for one day next week. Probably on, I don't know what's better for you. If it's online, I can go there on Thursday. It doesn't matter to me one way or the other. All right, well, just when you go in, 
Your coaching session, just whichever one you want to go with. Okay. Go with. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. My pleasure. Anybody else? All right, good. Well, y'all enjoy the rest of y'all day. Uh, make sure y'all go and schedule your coaching sessions and let's get this thing done. Let's, let's help put some people in some houses. All right. All right, y'all have a good one. Good job, Jess. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys. Have a nice day.